praise is due to Allah Ta'ala who has blessed us in many, many, many different ways. One of the greatest blessings Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala can give to a human being is the blessing of faith. And one of, if not the greatest blessing because faith is the key to salvation. And one of the greatest blessings Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala can give to a believer is the blessing of humility. Because humility is the negation of arrogance. And arrogance is the sin of shaitan. So shaitan arrogated himself. Allah Ta'ala describes his action with so when we said to the angels, prostrate yourself, and Shaitan at least was not from the angels, but he was in their presence when the order was given, and he was included in the order. Allah Ta'ala mentions him, Kanamin al Jinn, he was from the jinn, not from the angels, but he was in their presence. And so Allah Ta'ala says they all prostrated themselves except Shaitan. Abba, he refused, was taqbara, and he arrogated himself, wa kana min al-kafirin, and he was amongst those who rejected faith. So his rejection is rooted in his arrogance. His refusal is rooted in his arrogance. And his arrogance is a function of his misunderstanding. He said, I'm better than Adam. He didn't understand Adam's situation. And a khayrun min. I'm better than him. So as believers, we should strive to humble ourselves so that we do not assume we're better than anyone. Our Prophet sallallahu mentioned, قَالْ أَوْحَى اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَلَيَّ أَنْ تَوَاضَعْ حَتَّى لَا يَفْخَرَ أَحَدٍ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم He said, I've been ordered to instruct the people to humble themselves so that no one would take pride over anyone else. So that no one would take pride over anyone else. So when we become arrogant, we start looking down on others and we start elevating ourselves. And this was what Shaitan did. So this is a very satanic way of functioning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions one of the crucial characteristics of the believers. That the believers are none other than those when Allah is mentioned, their hearts quiver. He describes the believers as walking humbly on the earth. So they walk humbly on the earth. And when they're addressed by the ignorant people, they don't fight them, they don't insult them in turn. They don't try to retaliate against them. They say, peace. They say, peace. Because they understand that this life is too short to be worried about tit for tat. This life is too short to be worried about uh, petty retaliation for petty slights. We have a bigger mission. We have graver concerns. We have, and we have to get on with our business. We have business. That's play. That's play, and that's why children like to do it so much. If a child can find an avenue to uh, get his parents or her parents <coughs> caught up in a back and forth with them, a child relishes that because it's, a, it's, an, a, it's a, an element of control. And the child sees himself or herself exerting their control. It's as if they say, you know, I can make my mommy start yelling at me anytime I want. I want. Watch this. <laughs> That's control. And 
is very childish. An adult to think like that, you know, I'm going to make this dude start tripping out, check this out. That's childish. An adult should be worrying about what can I do to make this world better? What can I do to make it easier for somebody? What can I do to extend some peace into the lives of people whose hearts are being being uh, rendered asunder by all the confusion and nonsense that people have been forced to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Those are adult concerns and ultimately the ultimate adult concern, what can I do to work for my akhirah? Because a child isn't thinking about his or her akhirah, they might not even be able to conceptualize the idea of the hereafter. But an adult should be able to understand the nature of this world and the nature of this life and the nature of the life hereafter and to understand that what I do now is critical in terms of determining where I'm going to be tomorrow. And where I'm going to be tomorrow, there's really two things at the end of the day. Either perpetual bliss or perpetual torment. And for some, a limited torment. But the torment of the, of the hellfire is so terrible, a person wouldn't want to spend an instant in it. Let alone 50,000, 100,000 years, and then they're taken out because they have faith, but their faith was accompanied by sins, and they're punished by their sins and eventually saved by their faith. But after what? After they've been burned in the hellfire until they become something that resembles a lump of coal? I should live that. May Allah ward that off from all of us. Amen. And one of the greatest things we can do is to humble ourselves. Allah Ta'ala, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, reminds us, Allahumma Sallallahu Alaihi Rasulillah, ma naqasat sadaqatun min mad, that charity will never decrease your money. And this is the key to understanding the power of humility. Why is the hadith that Culminates with وَمَا تَوَضَعَ أَحَدٌ لِلَّهِ إِلَّا رَفَعَهُ اللَّهِ And no one humbles themselves for the sake of Allah except that Allah elevates them. Why does it start off with mentioning charity will never decrease your wealth? Because it starts off by reminding us that the physical realities that we see are accompanied by a deeper metaphysical reality. And that for us to begin to grow spiritually and therefore to begin to mature as a human being because it's our spirituality that makes us uniquely human, we have to begin to look beyond the physical and to begin to look to the metaphysical, those realities beyond the physical. So if we look at just the physical reality, we give our wealth, we had a hundred dollars, we gave fifty dollars, we have fifty left, left, how can that be true? How can charity not decrease my wealth? I had one hundred, I gave fifty in charity, I'm down to fifty now. That's a decrease. But if we look at the metaphysical, we understand that that fifty remaining, we mentioned this previously, we can buy more with it than we would have bought with the one hundred. So it's as if we still have the 100 or we have even more. Because there's barakah, there's blessing. There's blessing in the money that remains. And that blessing involves a metaphysical idea. Something that's not rooted in this physical reality. But something we know is real. Because we've all seen it in our lives. We've all seen it in the lives of others. We've seen what blessed people can do. And this is what we need. We need blessed people today. We're talking about the Muslims. We need to get stronger. Our enemies are selling us from every angle. We need more planes, more bombs. If we can't do, get more bombs, we'll blow ourselves up. But we need more physical power. As if that's the key to our success. We need more metaphysical power. We need more people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
describes when he says, وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَمَى You didn't shoot when you shot it with Allah who shot. In other words, Allah was with you. And Allah caused what you did to have more effect and impact than you could have imagined. Those are the people we need. We need people whom Allah describes in the Hadith Qudsi. مَنْ عَادَ لِي وَلِيًّا فَقَدْ أَذَنْتُهُ بِالْحَرْقِ The one who transgresses against one, I have befriended one, I love, I declare war against them. We need more people like that. We need more people like Imam Ali, رضي الله عنه, when he picked up the door at Khaybar, that after the battle, ten men couldn't budge. But did he pick it up because of his physical stature? Imam Ali wasn't that big. He wasn't tall and statuesque like Umar radiallahu anh or Ubad ibn Samad bin Samad or some of the other really big, powerfully built companions. But he had a force with him that transcends the physical. And this is what we have to understand. And one of the keys to getting in touch with that force is humility. And one of the keys to humility is looking beyond this physical reality. This is why, and we have to orient our young people. We have young people, some fake Muslim, come, you know, if you're real concerned for this room, our sisters are being raped, and our <coughs> people are being bombed, and you're sitting here in America getting fat. If you are a real man, I'm a real man. If you're a real man, then take this and blow up some babies and women and children. I'm a real man, I'll do it. Why are some youth deluded like that? Because they don't understand what real manhood is. And they don't understand what real power is. We have to orient our youth. It's not what you physically possess. Because you'll always be lacking. And if you're always lacking, you'll always be seeking for desperate means to make up the gap. That's not going to do anything for anybody. But when you have strength of character, strength of heart, strength of spirit, strength of soul, those are the people that have an impact. Those are the people that have understanding. And people of understanding, they know how to reach people. They know how to talk to people. And when we talk and communicate to people, we find out we're all in the same boat. Some Muslims act like Muslims are the only victims of the increasingly pernicious and venal corporate rape of this planet. We're the, the least of the victims. There are whole people that have been wiped out. There are islands in the South Pacific that are underwater. People's homes have been engulfed as a result of global warming. The, the people in the north, the Inuits and other northern people, the ice is melting. Their way of life, their villages are falling into the ocean. The bears they used to hunt and the fish and seals are disappearing. Whole lifestyles, whole ways of life, whole populations are being threatened with extinction. And it's all based on the same cause. In this country, there are people we have common cause with. You want to do something. Go, go join those veterans for peace who are chaining themselves to the White House yesterday. Protesting against the vicious war machine that misguided Muslims only empower. They only empower. They go, all these Muslims are terrorists, that's why we need these wars. No, we're people of peace. Boom. Well, Muslim blows himself or something up. Oh, see, I told you. That's called an advanced state of idiocy. If I had a stronger word, I would use it. That's idiocy. That's stupidity. That's immaturity. That's imbecility. That's, that's desperation. Allah is not going to take care of his business. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, وَكَانَ حَقًّا عَلَيْنَا مُصْبُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ that we've made it a right over ourselves. We can't impose it right on Allah. But he said, I've made it a right over myself that I will help the believers. But who, who 
Jewish believers. Allah is not going to help people that murder babies and women and then justify it when they kill our babies and our women. Many of you remember the movie, The Lion of the Desert. And the scene where the Muslims popped out in the desert and they ambushed the Italians. And one Italian survived and Umar Mukhtar, actually Anthony Quinn, gave him the flag back and said, take this to your general, tell him it doesn't belong there. And one of his men said, we should kill him. And then Umar Mukhtar says, we don't kill prisoners. And then his man said, well, they kill our, our prisoners. And then what did he say? They are not our teachers. They are not our teachers. The CIA is not our teachers. They torture. The U.S. military is not our teachers. They kill civilians. They blow up wedding parties. The Israeli Defense Force is not our teacher. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is our teacher. And one of the few things that's been narrated by absolute binding consensus, ijma'ah. Ijma'ah are very few. Ikhtilafat are many. And so they said you don't become a true scholar until you learn the differences. But one thing that the, that the ummah has agreed on. نَهَى رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمْ عَنْ قَبْنَ النِّسَاءِ وَالصَّبْيَانِ That the Messenger of Allah صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمْ prohibited killing women and children. So where does a Muslim get off blowing up a bunch of women and children who didn't even do anything to him? Who don't even know why the world is spinning the way it's spinning? We don't need that. We need people who can humble themselves. And that's what we need to tell our young people. Humble yourself. You don't have all the answers. Matter of fact, you don't have any answers. And I've been there. I was the hot, most hot-headed. Let's go. And you know what? One of my friends, we were talking a few years ago. He said, you know, when we were running around, blowing off all that steam, he said, someone that should have taken us in the alley and spanked us. And a lot of these young kids need to be taken into an alley somewhere and spanked. Because your foolishness is undermining what serious people are trying to accomplish. <coughs> and one day they'll thank you. One day there'll be a lot of thanking for the spanking. <coughs> <laughs> but only after humility. Only after humility. Realize, you know what? He's right. She's right. I don't have all the answers. I need to humble myself. I need to listen to someone who's been around the block a few times before I try to come in and run the neighborhood. And you know what happens when that scenario happens. So we just come in, try to run the neighborhood. Didn't even talk to no one on the block. Didn't consult anybody. You know what happens. And that's a metaphor for things that might happen. If we don't get control of our community, we need humility. And if we're humble, Allah Ta'ala will elevate us. This is the point. Charity will never decrease your wealth. And Allah will only increase a servant who has the ability to pardon others with honor. And no one humbles themselves for the sake of Allah, except that Allah exalts them. So we could take our chances. We could try to exalt ourselves. We can engage in desperate means and desperate measures to exalt ourselves. And it's across the board. It could be in our communities. It could be in our marriages. One wants to exalt himself. Wants to be the boss. Call all the shots. Not listen to the other spouse. Not consult. So we could try to elevate ourselves. Or we can humble ourselves 
and let Allah will elevate us. Who's going to end up in a higher position? One who elevates himself or herself based on his or her human weaknesses and frailties and ignorance, or one who's elevated by Allah based on his infinite, unlimited power, his infinite, unlimited knowledge, his infinite, unlimited mercy. I take my chances with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا وصف الله لي ولكم المسلمين من إني أقوم الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد على آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم One final point to the law Going is late and the time is late just to remind all the brothers and sisters that a person who is humble is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a person who is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't shaken by these worldly vicissitudes, the ups and downs of the world. A person who is with the world will be on a roller coaster. If the world goes up to the top, they go up to the top. If the world comes cascading down, they come cascading down. If the world goes in a wild turn, they go into a wild turn. But a person who's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above all of that. And again, that person, their position, their standing with Allah is based on their humility. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, This is the home of the hereafter. وَلَا فَسَادَ وَالْعَقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And we've made that here that heavenly home for those who don't desire to exalt themselves in the earth. لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُرِيدُونَ عُلُوًا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فَسَادَ Nor to work corruption therein. وَالْعَقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And the end will be for the people of taqwa. The end will be for the people of righteousness. So we don't have to panic. Allah Ta'ala said the end is for the righteous. Our challenge is to work so that we can be amongst the righteous. That's our challenge. Our challenge is not to figure out every twist and turn of the world. Our challenge is to work, to struggle, to strive so that we can be amongst the righteous. And if we're amongst the righteous, we'll be with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And if we're with Allah, we'll understand that the end is for the righteous. And we'll understand that all of these worldly things, if we're with Allah, they only increase our faith. Allah Ta'ala mentions, الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمْعُوا لَكُمْ فَخْشَوْهُمْ فَزَالُهُمْ إِمَانًا وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ Those who said the people are gathering against you, fear them. That's what they're telling Muslims. Aren't you afraid? I mean, all this tension... You should be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, uh, it only increased their faith. فَزَادُمْ إِمَانَةً وَقَالُمْ حَسْبُمْ وَاللَّهُ نِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ Allah suffices us, what an excellent one, to put our depute our affair to, to entrust our affair to. If we give our affair to Allah subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. And the believer has that stability. The believer has that inner peace. The believer has that confidence. And he or she understands this is the dunya. Imam Ali radiallahu anhu mentioned, Man arafa dunya hanak alihim musibat. The one who understands the nature of this world, calamities and tribulations become easy to deal with. Because he or she understands that's the nature of the world. The world is the abode of trial, the abode of tribulation, the abode of calamities. And the believer's job, Allah Ta'ala tells us, 
الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إن لله وإن إليه راجعون. Those who, when they are afflicted by a calamity, they say, "Verily, we belong to Allah, and unto Him we are all returning." So that's just a bump in the road in our journey back to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But if we think this world is the end of the journey, it's not going to be a bump in the road. The road's going to be closed and blocked and barricaded with insurmountable objects. But if we understand this is just the road to Allah, and Allah said there's going to be some bumps in the road, just go around them or just very carefully go over them. Or if we're reckless, we just have a bumpy ride and get free chiropractic care. Allahumma fil muslimin wal muslimat wal mu'minin wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa habna hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahhab rabbana afr 'alaina as-sabran wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna 'ala al-qawm al-kafirin rabbana afr 'alaina as-sabran wa thabbit aqdamana wa tawaffana muslimin wa'fu 'anna wa ghfir lana wa arhamna أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وقهر الرجال ونعوذ بك من الفقر إلا إليك ومن الرد إلا لك ومن الخوف إلا منك اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والغنى والعفاف والمغفرة أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم من أراد خيرا لهذه الأمة المحمدية فوثق إلى كل خير ومن أراد شرا لها وللمسلمين فخذه أخذ أخذ عزيز مقتدر اللهم اجعل تدبيرهم تدميرهم اللهم عليك بأعداء الإسلام أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أكم الصلاة يرحمني ورحمه الله And one of the greatest blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give to a believer is the blessing of humility because humility is the negation of arrogance and arrogance is the sin of shaitan. So shaitan arrogated himself. Allah Ta'ala describes his action with قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَ تِسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ أَبَا وَاسْتَكْبَرَ وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ So when we said to the angels, prostrate yourself. And shaitan at least was not from the angels, but he was in their presence when the order was given. And he was included in the order. Allah Ta'ala mentions him, كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِ He was from the jinn, not from the angels, but he was in their presence. And so Allah Ta'ala says, they all prostrated themselves except shaitan. Aba, he refused, was taqbara, and he arrogated himself, وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ And he was amongst those who rejected faith. So his rejection is rooted in his arrogance. His refusal is rooted in his arrogance. And his arrogance is a function of his misunderstanding. He said, I'm better than Adam. He didn't understand Adam's situation. And a khayrun min. I'm better than him. So, as believers, we should strive to humble ourselves so that we do not assume we're better than anyone. Our Prophet ﷺ mentioned, قَدْ أَوْحَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَلَيَّ أَنْ تَوَاضَعْ حَتَّى لَا يَفْخَرَ أَحَدٍ عَلَى أَحَدٍ أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم He said, I've been ordered to instruct the people to humble themselves so that no one would take pride over anyone else. So that no one would take pride over anyone else. So when we become arrogant, we start looking down on others. And we start elevating ourselves. And this was what shaitan did. So this is a very satanic 
way of functioning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions one of the crucial characteristics of the believers. That the believers are none other than those when Allah is mentioned, their hearts quiver. He describes the believers as walking humbly on the earth. يَمْشُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ حَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاتَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا So they walk humbly on the earth. And when they're addressed by the ignorant people, they don't fight them, they don't insult them in turn, they don't try to retaliate against them, they say, peace. وَإِذَا خَاتَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَأُمْ وَيَغْفِي لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ يُطْعِئِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا أَمَّا بَعْضُ فَإِنَّ أَصْطَقَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَخَيْرَ الْهَدْيِ هَدْيُ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَشَرُ الْأُمُورَ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا فَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِرْعَ وَكُلَّ بِرْعَةٍ ضَلَالًا وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا الحمد لله رب العالمين All praises due to Allah Ta'ala who's blessed us in many 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 different ways One of the greatest blessings Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala can give to a human being is the blessing of faith. And one of, if not the greatest blessing, because faith is the key to salvation.